The holiday season is known for bringing family and friends together and creating happy memories. But for some, holiday memories are surrounded by tragedy. This month, we'll be sharing one unsolved missing person story every single day. We hope sharing their story will help bring them home for the holidays. Did you know that among other terrible stats America is known for, we also lead the world in missing persons as well? That doesn't surprise me at all. The state of Washington is in the top five United States of where people go missing. We have covered many missing persons cases that there as well as followed several others that we haven't had the chance to cover yet. Logan Schindelman, Matthew Anfelt, Nancy Moyer, just to name a few. December 26, 1999, yet another person was added to that roster. It was the last day that anyone saw 17-year-old Tammy Kowalchuk. Tammy had a close relationship with her mother, and despite their frequent disagreements, Tammy was always honest with her. As a child, Tammy wanted to grow up and become a veterinarian. Her mother said that she could walk up to any animal and instantly make a connection with them. She was a stunning five foot, eight inch tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, basically a model. Aww. She did run away frequently and had a few run ins with the cops. In fact, she had a court mandated curfew of 10 p.m. Tammy also had been expelled from every grade school in Tacoma. That's probably a lot, or at least in their district. It was, okay. her mom said, basically every school. Oh, in the wow. Tacoma area. In the 90s, getting a diagnosis for ADD or ADHD was much more taboo and hard to prove than it is today. But Tammy would get diagnosed with ADHD and a few other behavioral issues later in life. Her mom always said that Tammy thought she was older than she truly was. My parents would have said that she was, quote, too big for her britches. Oh my gosh, yes. Tammy had struggled off and on with methamphetamine abuse in an attempt to self-medicate, and when she was using, she could easily turn violent. She also learned as a teenager that the easiest way to make money was engaging in sex work. Tammy's mother said that more than once, Tammy was raped and abused by these Johns who were meeting her for sex. As part of her question ground, Tammy had recently been ordered to complete a program at Echo Glen Children's Center. This center is a medium to maximum security facility that is the only institution for female offenders, but also provides treatment services for younger male offenders. They specialize in dialectical behavior therapy, aggression replacement therapy, cultural programming, sex offense specific treatment, and inpatient chemical dependency treatment. They also provide gender-specific therapy for female offenders, and it's known for its canine connection program that allows the youth to train future service animals. Tammy was released from Echo Glen shortly before the Christmas holiday season began. That December afternoon, Tammy left her family home, got into a small white car on East Morton Avenue there in Tacoma, Washington. Later that same evening, she called her mom to tell her she was going to go with a truck driver she knew by the name of Tony, and that she was going to come home, pack a bag, and join him on one of his long hauls. Tammy, like most mothers, said, no ma'am, you are not. Come home. You can't go with this man. You have a court-mandated curfew, and you've got to get home before it expires. Tammy never returned. With her history of running away, the fact that she didn't return for her curfew was not surprising to her mother. She regularly pushed the boundaries, and even though they communicated when Tammy didn't get her way, she acted out. Tammy's mom searched the streets of Tacoma for days, even weeks, especially where she used to work and tried to talk to anyone that may have seen her. Tammy used a few different aliases while participating in sex work, Tamara or Tabitha, no leads arose from her no leads arose from her mother's search. However, because of her history, Tammy's mom didn't report her missing. She thought she's just staying with a friend or doing what she's done. The harder her mom tried, the more Tammy would resist. She wouldn't report her missing until 2004. Yeah. So that's five years. She probably didn't want to get her in trouble, maybe, or have to be deal with authorities when she, she'll come home. 
yes, she probably should have reported her, but man. Her mom was between a rock and a hard place. She was damned if she did, damned if she didn't. People are going to judge her for not calling immediately, reporting her missing. But then that would just push Tammy further and further away. Authorities had absolutely, absolutely nothing to go on. It had been five years. The truck driver named Tony was long since gone. There's no way they're going to walk into a truck stop and say, hey, does anyone know Tony from five years ago? No way. No one has seen or heard from Tammy since that fateful day. Authorities fear that Tammy became a victim of foul play. She is listed as missing and as a kidnapped person with evidence of foul play. She's mm-hmm. white, weighed around 100 pounds, so she's tiny, when she was last seen at 234 East 64th Avenue in Tacoma. She may use the name Tabitha or Tamara and has a tattoo of a teardrop under her right eye. If you have any information about Tammy, please contact the Tacoma Police Department at 253 798 Four seven two one, And I'm going to assume police haven't released why they think it is foul play, but I bet they have. For them to list that they have, that she's kidnapped with evidence of foul play, they've got to have something. Yeah. Maybe a phone call to her mom where she seems distressed that they haven't released or something. But there's got to be something more than she just disappeared. Yeah, because we've seen these cases way too many times. Mm-hmm. Where they're, oh, they ran away. Don't worry about it. The fact that they say there's evidence of a kidnapping. And another thought that goes with this is Tacoma is prime hunting area for the Green River Killer. There's other serial killers in the area as well. I mean, you've got the Israel Keys. You've got, again, the Green River Killer. There's several truck, the Happy Face Killer. There was many truck driver style serial killers, if you want to call it that. That was their M.O. Could she have become a victim to a serial killer? It's possible. It's definitely not off the table. Yeah, I agree. 